Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk about soybean seed and big seed. Is that a good thing? What should you be thinking about if you have great big soybean seed versus smaller seed this year? We'll also talk about corn, rootworm, insecticides. If you're going away from traits, you're going to need an insecticide. We'll tell you which one today. We'll show you how to get our Weed of the Week under control a little later in the show, and we've got an iron talk too. But first, here's our Farm Basics. These days, it can be hard to make the math work in your soybean fields. With the Liberty Link system with Liberty Herbicide, it gets easier. A two plus bushel per acre advantage over Asgrow Roundup ready to extend soybeans means at least $18 more an acre for you. Plus, lower system input costs and more complete weed control all adds up to at least $33 more an acre for your farm. That's smart math. Grow smart with BASF. Today's Farm Basics, we're going to discuss a biofuel called ethanol. So ethanol can be made out of a number of different grains and for that matter even cellulose. But in the United States today, ethanol is predominantly coming from corn. So as a corn farmer who delivers his corn to an ethanol plant, I can speak pretty firsthand to this. And I can just tell you that the, the number one thing that I, I think about whenever people mention ethanol is I think about all the non-farmers who have misconceptions about it. The number one thing that people will say is, well, I'm worried about it hurting my engine. What? No, it's not gonna hurt your engine. In fact, you can run even pretty high levels of ethanol. We've run a lot of E30 in our vehicles for years and years. Uh, I go back probably five, six years ago, the Minnesota Corn Growers Association did a big study. They found that the most economical, energy efficient fuel to use was E30. So in the United States today, yeah, there are a lot of people using E10. Now quite a few people are using E15, but E30 is really the way to go. So that's what I'm running in my vehicles. But you just have to take a look at, can my vehicle handle ethanol? In almost all cases, the answer is yes. In other countries, they run the same engines and are running more ethanol, like Brazil, for example. I was in Brazil a couple of times over the last decade, and they run typically at least a 20% ethanol blend, if not higher, depending on how much ethanol they had. They're very concerned about being energy independent, which I think is pretty interesting, and I'd like to see our country that way as well. The other big thing I always talk to people about is, look, ethanol, before it's denatured at least, you can actually drink it. Whereas with gasoline, if you drink even a tiny little bit, you're dead. So when we talk about safety of ethanol, period, it is so much safer for everyone. That's really got to be a big issue as we move forward. Well, greenhouse gas emissions as well, much less with ethanol. The, the profile of it, environmentally speaking, is it's very, fantastic. very good. And it's coming from a renewable source, which is another big plus that we aren't going to run out of corn. We've got plenty and we can raise more. You look at America's corn farmers, for example, and see how many more bushels per acre we're raising each year. Uh, and we're doing it uh, across the country. It's been fantastic. So even in the uh, western corn, the extreme western corn belt, we're raising some yields now that would rival some of the central corn belt states that have long thought to be the corn kings. Okay, so a lot of people talk about food versus fuel. That's a bunch of nonsense, okay? There's no such thing as food versus fuel. It's food and fuel. Because with ethanol, all we're taking out of that corn to produce ethanol is the starch. Okay, that's it. We're leaving all the vitamins, all the nutrients, that's still in there. That gets fed to livestock. So all you really need to do, if you thought about it, is just replace that starch with some other starch you can get out of the field. Just take some of the residue that's laying on the soil surface of almost corn all cornfields once you get done. It's no big deal. In fact, a lot of farmers we talk to, they refer to that residue as trash. They want to get rid of at least a portion of it. That's all you'd have to do. Put that back together with the distiller's grain, the byproduct of ethanol, and you're right back to 100% where you started. Well, as you can tell, Brian and I are pretty passionate about ethanol. It's something that, as we mentioned, our own corn from our farm is going to ethanol production. We've got livestock right around us that's being fed the distiller's grains, which are the byproduct of ethanol production. And we've seen the whole system work very well with this renewable fuel. And again, I'd mentioned the safety. I think that's a real huge thing that doesn't get talked about enough with ethanol versus gasoline. 
Well, you're going to need some sort of fuel to get out in the field and stop our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? What do the top growers in the world have in common? If you had some insight into their strategies, would that help guide you moving forward? I'm Darren Hefty with Ag PhD. On Tuesday, February 19th, we'll be holding a free Secrets of High Yield Fields workshop on our farm near Baltic, South Dakota. We'll show you soil tests from some of the highest yielding fields in the world, compare them to farm averages in your area, and discuss which strategies will benefit you most. Attend the Ag PhD Secrets of High Yield Fields workshop. Register today at agphd.com. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the Roundup Ready Extend crop system, the system that makes the difference. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yield's what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. Farmers across the country have put their confidence in the Roundup Ready Extend crop system. These are their experiences. This year, Extend Max has been a, a great tool for us to go out there and to kill weeds. We applied it early on a couple fields that were dirty. It really did a phenomenal job on getting the fields clean. Our Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans last year performed very well. Our percentage of satisfaction has got to be real close to 100%. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Let's take a look at our picks for the championship season. We've got 10 30 No, no, no. I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk about this agro liquid team. Take a look at this lineup. They got it all. The talent, their players can meet any challenge on any field. The coaching staff, the best I've seen. So that's your pick? No discussions? Nope. Agro Liquid is the team. They're going all the way to the championship. <laughs> Avoid dry run failures with the new High Pro Force Field Pump, providing the ultimate protection. This wet seal pump will save you on costly in season downtime to keep your sprayer running. Now all you have to worry about is the weather. High Pro, helping you spray better. Commodity Classic is an early adopter's paradise. This is where what's next happens, where you can meet the people who are changing the way you farm. From the jaw-dropping trade show to outstanding educational sessions to one-on-one -on -one conversations with other farmers from across the nation, you'll be among the first to experience the new ideas, innovations, and technology that can help your operation stay profitable in times of challenge and change. Be in Orlando February 28th through March 2nd at the 2019 Commodity Classic. Visit commodityclassic.com. Ten years ago, as a farmer, I wanted the smallest soybean seed I could get because I bought soybean seed by the pound. Well, today it's different. Today we're buying soybean seed by 140,000 seed count, so now I want big seed because I know that big seed has a little bit more potential to be vigorous and healthy. Well, one thing about big seed is it was produced in a field, right? And what happened? Well, they got big yield. They got great big seeds, and seed size is one of the components of yield. As we found on our farm, as we increase our fertility levels and our management practices, we're getting bigger soybean seed each year. But there certainly are varieties out there that are more prone to having just ginormous seed size. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we do believe that we're getting a little bit more vigor out of those big seeds. Now when we test, and we have our own testing lab at Ag PhD, we can test for just straight out germination, cold germ, all those types of things. Really, when we look at small seed versus big seed, for the most part, it's not all that much different. Now certainly if we get to really, really tiny seeds, yes, we might get hurt a little bit there. But if I'm comparing 3,000 seed count, which is what we used to get 10 years ago on our farm at harvest, to today when we get about 2,000 seed count, uh, so in other words, 2,000 seeds per pound, that's a big difference, right? Uh, but we aren't really seeing a lot of germination difference typically, but nevertheless, we know that with those big seeds, we only got the big seeds in the first place by better fertility, better management overall. So we just believe that that's got to carry over into that seed the following year when it gets planted somewhere. 
There are a couple of issues though that could pop up with larger seed size. One of them is going to be plantability. You may have to change your seed discs, you may have to change your air settings to handle some of this big seed. A lot of times when we get down in the 2200, 2300 seeds per pound area, that's where we start running into issues. And we've seen some this year as big as 1800 seeds per pound. So if you've got some of that great big seed, just call a spade a spade. Hey, you know what, this is a good thing, but I'm gonna need different discs on my planter to make sure I can do it without grinding the seed up. And speaking of that, we do see some seed coats coming off on some of these great big seeds. Now, part of that could be a fertility issue in the production field. If we're short on copper, especially, that's one that's really involved in seed coat stretchability. And if we're a little short in copper and we've got great big yields, so it's probably easy to run short in a nutrient, that could be a spot where it suffers, where you may see some fractures in that seed coat. Now, as Brian mentioned, we do look at germination on seeds, and, and every seed company that's selling those seeds has to meet germination standards in the state where it's being sold. There's probably not a germination issue, but there could be some seed coats that come off through the process of handling that seed. You'll just have to watch for that as well. Well, there's no doubt that we've seen average seed size get bigger. Again, we do think it's a good thing, but here's the whole deal. I run into farmers from time to time that'll say, well, I'm just gonna send that seed back, or I'm gonna tell that seed company I don't want that big seed. Look, it's gonna continue trending that way, because think about it. On average, are farmers increasing or decreasing their planting populations with soybeans? I'd say they're staying flat, if not even decreasing just slightly over time. At the same time, we're getting more yield. Okay, so what does that tell you about the odds for seed size? It's gonna just most likely keep getting bigger and bigger. Now, I don't know if we're ever gonna go to 1,200 or 1,500 seeds per pound or anything like that, but I do know that 2,000 seeds per pound is now kind of getting to be a norm in a lot of areas and with certain varieties. So I'm just trying to say, figure out a way to make this work on your farm because it is the future. As you're picking your soybean seed for next year's crop, you may have to think about our Weed of the Week. We'll show you what will get it under control coming up later in the show. At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planting? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTail High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTail is the right tool for spring field conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTail to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. And how about the big man, Pro Germinator? Yeah, this guy's got some experience in the field. But look at his stats. You can't argue with those kind of results. You're right. I know a lot of teams wishing their phosphorus player had those kind of numbers. Right, but this guy's not just phosphorus. He's got the nitrogen, the potassium, the micros. All those just add up to his phosphorus game. And his game is good. Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm. Because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future.
Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. We started utilizing the Dua React system this year. You can adjust your speed and it automatically adjusts your sprayer tips so you can slow down and you aren't building up huge droplets or you can speed up and you're not throwing a mist that's drifting. Hypro, helping you spray better. When it comes to corn rootworm insecticides, we're getting a lot more interest and a lot more questions in these over the last couple of years because a lot of people are going away from traits Many farmers are trying to cut expenses, which sounds great when you're buying your seed. Oh, I save money on my seed by not getting the trait. But let's not forget, corn rootworm insecticide does cost some money. Now, yes, you can skip the insecticide, you can skip the trait, but if you have insect damage, well, you save money up front, but you lost yield on the other side. So did you really come out ahead or not? That's a good question. Well, and it's a question that you have to answer before the season starts because if you don't put these insecticides out at planting time you can't really use them later there's no rescue treatment for corn rootworm and we know we've got corn rootworm issues out there this year i was out in the extreme western corn belt and i, I was at a seed plot and i was looking at different hybrids and the farmer from across the road came came over and said what are you looking at what are you seeing over here and i i said well i'm looking at different corn hybrids and and he goes, yeah, I don't need that rootworm trade. I don't have any rootworms. And I grabbed the next ear of corn. There were three rootworm beetles on it. And there were rootworm beetles flying everywhere. And I said, well, I don't know about you, but there's certainly a rootworm problem here. And I don't think these beetles just stay in one field. And in fact, they don't. They do move around a little bit. If you've got corn in your area, chances are there are some corn rootworm beetles flying. They're, they lay eggs in the fall. Then these larvae will attack your corn in the early to mid season next year. Crop rotation can certainly help, but like Darren said, these adult beetles can move around from field to field. So even if you are in a corn soybean rotation, if there is just a lot of corn in your area, you're at risk. Now going into 2019, many farmers I've talked to are considering some continuous corn acres. We're gonna raise some continuous corn acres on our farm too. Well there, you absolutely have to make sure you're addressing rootworms, either with trait or insecticide, and in some cases both. So let's talk specifically about which insecticides are best for your farm. When you think about the dry insecticides, you've got to have the right application equipment to get this done. But assuming that you do, we're looking at products like Force and Aztec and Smart Choice, all good options for you, all pretty effective at controlling corn rootworm, getting you, I would say 90% control, not 100%, but 90%. Now you say, well, wait a second, that's not as good as those traits are. That's true, they're not as good as the stack traits like smart stacks, for example, but they also get the secondary insects and we're seeing more wire worms, white grubs would be another problem, but seed corn beetles, seed corn maggots, we can wipe those out with these planting time insecticides. Yeah, and there really aren't BT traits for many of those insects that Darren just mentioned. So there definitely are advantages to having insecticide out there. We love Force, Aztec, Smart Choice, the dries are the way to go if you want the very best control. If you want a lesser price though, you could use something like Capture LFR. That's still a good insecticide. It's not gonna be quite as good as the dries, but it's pretty close. And with the LFR formulation, that's liquid fertilizer ready, you could combine that with your starter fertilizer. So in other words, you get to save money on an application system and you can throw it right in the tank with the liquid fertilizer. Well, it's a really convenient way to get an insecticide out there. And in fact, there are formulations now like Temetry and Manticore that you get a fungicide and insecticide all together that you could put right in with your fertilizer potentially as you're planting the crops. You could get multiple jobs done at the same time. And that is a nice added feature when you can get the fungicide and insecticide together. All right, the only thing that we'd caution you on is do a jar test first. We always worry about mixing, but in most cases it works pretty well. One other thing we probably should mention too, as you're choosing between these products, look at the modes of action in each of them. Now we talked about capture as a, an option as a liquid. Well, that's a pyrethroid. We look at force on the dry side, that's a pyrethroid. Aztec and Smart Choice both have multiple modes of action in them. So if you say, well, I want at least two modes of action, 
great, choose Aztec or choose Smart Choice. But if you say, you know what, I don't really care about that so much, as long as it's going to be an effective product for me, Force and Capture are both still really good options. And when it comes to safety, they're pretty good in terms of insecticides. The last thing we get questions on is placement. Where should I put this, in furrow, band, or T-band? Uh, T-band, by the way, is kind of a combination, a little bit band and a little bit in furrow. Personally, for rootworm, I prefer T-band. If I'm just going after below ground pests that are going to attack the seed only, like let's say it's seed corn maggot, seed corn beetle, uh, maybe wire worm, then I would say in furrow is a better choice. If I'm just going after cutworm, I would say band is a better choice. So it just depends on which insecticide you're using. You gotta follow the label. Some products are not labeled for all those application methods. And then it depends on which pest you're going after, which pest is number one for you. Again, for me, if it's a rootworm, I'm probably going T-band. Well, protecting your corn crop from insects is certainly a big deal, but don't forget about weed control. We'll show you how to stop our Weed of the Week coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher with unrivaled weed control, reduced drift, and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Weed of the Week is Prickly Cida. Otherwise known as tea weed. I, I get farmers brand and they'll say, hey, how do you control tea weed? And I'm like, I, I don't know, what do you mean, thistles? <laughs> or No, no, it doesn't start with tea, it's tea weed. That's Prickly Cida. Oh, okay, well, Roundup doesn't do a great job. And a lot of times when I get multiple requests for, tell me how to control this weed, this weed, this weed, it's because Roundup's not doing a good job on it. So we've got to use some alternative chemistry. Fortunately, we've got some pre's that have some activity too. Yeah, and I don't know why Roundup isn't doing that great a job. Maybe it's resistance, maybe it's the timing on things. It, this is a summer annual weed, so it's not like a perennial or biennial, anything like that. It's not the toughest weed in the world to control. You can start with some good pre-emerge herbicides out there. We really like Sharpen and Wheat, for example, and then you could follow post-emerge with Wide Match Plus Affinity. In corn, there are a lot of different pre-emerge options that are pretty effective. Sure Start and Triple Flex have been really nice. Resicor has been good as well. Verdict. Also, the products that have balance in them have, have worked fairly well. HPPDs are okay on Prickly Cida. If you put atrazine with them post-emerge though, they're better. So you can only use the HPPD once. If you're using it pre, you can't use it post. Yeah, and that's fine too, because I like status best post-emerge. I think that's gonna be a much better option than any HPPD. In soybeans, I would prefer you go extend soybeans. That way we can use our three pre's down and come back with a product like Fexapan Post. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week, Prickly Cida, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the Roundup Ready Extend crop system. The system that makes the difference. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yields what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. Farmers across the country have put their confidence in the Roundup Ready Extend crop system. These are their experiences. This year, Extend Max has been a, a great tool for us to go out there and to kill weeds. We applied it early on a couple fields that were dirty. It really did a phenomenal job on getting the fields clean. Our Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans last year performed very well. Our percentage of satisfaction has got to be real close to 100%.
If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields, and current protection methods aren't enough. But a breakthrough seed treatment technology controls nematodes when they attack. Now offering Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. How can you cut farm expenses in 2019 and still yield well? Which input expenses are just that, expenses? And which inputs will give you great weed, insect, and disease control and give you a great return on your investment? These are big questions this season and we'll answer them with the free Ag PhD 101 Ways to Cut Farm Expenses workshops. We'll take a close look at every kind of farm expense. So if saving money is important to you, come to Ag PhD's 101 Ways to Cut Farm Expenses workshops. Registration is now open at agphd.com. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on. Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. If you raised a great crop, you've got a lot of residue to deal with. We'll talk about residue breakdown in today's Iron Talk. For us, the biggest residue situation to deal with on our farm is corn stalks. For you, it may be different. There are several ways to approach heavy crop residues in your fields. However, the fall of 2018 was just too wet for many farmers to get them accomplished. So we've got to do things in the spring, and depending on the spring soil conditions, many farmers will still choose heavy tillage. Whether it's a disc ripper like an Ecolo Tiger 875 or a chisel plow, you can size and bury a lot of residue in a hurry. There are certainly benefits to this process like a warmer seed bed, improved water infiltration, and faster residue breakdown. In highly erodible soils, you may choose vertical tillage instead with equipment like the True Tandem 335VT or the 335 Barracuda for sizing corn stalks to improve flowability through your planter. We've taken on this approach in situations where we didn't use a chopping corn head, just simply stirring up a little soil when we're doing the tillage along with all the biological life that's in that soil and getting it to mix with the stalks has improved our residue breakdown. Another strategy that some farms will use is to add humates, manure, or even commercial fertilizer to the residue in any tillage or no-till program to try to speed up residue breakdown. Our experience in the northern U.S. has been that unless you can get this done in late September or early October, we typically don't get enough heat to get a significant amount of residue breakdown early in the spring without some form of tillage in addition. As corn planting begins in some areas of the country, farmers are hoping for warm, dry conditions to make the job a little bit easier dealing with last season's crop residues. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. We hope you've enjoyed our show today. If you're looking for more great agronomic information, we'd encourage you to check out the Ag PhD Insider magazine. You can go to agphdinsider.com to learn more and to subscribe. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.